Hello, everyone. It's always uh, wonderful to be back with you. This is Sheila Robinson Kiss, your auntie Sheila. Uh, the lift, you know, we've got it all here. Mental health movement motivation. As you all know, from time to time, I put out uh, special 911 messages. I do receive your notes uh, because of time constraints. Obviously, I can't respond to them all, uh, but there are some that uh, come across you know, you're in distress. I know it can be difficult to make yourself vulnerable, but I did want to put out a quick response uh, to a message, a note that I got a few days ago. Let's get in the, into this because it's dealing with something. I think most of us listening have dealt with something like this. I would greatly appreciate if in the responses you would show love to Danielle, give her some uh, words of encouragement here. Let me get into uh, her note. And it just has to do with maltreatment. Um, and I label it as casual cruelty, uh, just for the record here. Dear Sheila, I'm looking for a combination of comfort and specific guidance. I started a relationship about eight months ago. I got a lot of attention. It was so exciting. And then slowly things started to change. This man is distant and reaches out briefly when I reach out. Seems like it happened overnight. Sometimes he says things that give me hope. Um, that he still feels the same. I've asked for clarification. He just glosses over my request. I'm struggling to reconcile the fact that I see myself at this point being mistreated, and I'm still hoping for that spark to return. If he's not interested, why not be transparent and just let me go? Most recently, he simply ignored a heartfelt correspondence. I'm an intelligent, successful mother of three grown children. I love God and have some awesome friends. I feel like I should not need to ask for encouragement and advice in this situation, but I watch your channel and I believe I will find comfort in your words. I really, I'm really tired um, at this point and I'm in a take it or leave it sort of mode. I've been so eager to connect with him now. That feeling is dying. I'm exhausted. Thanks, Sheila. Danielle. Well, Danielle, again, um, thank you so much for trusting me um, with what's on your heart and mine. I'll be completely candid. I, I read the note, and because I've gone through the same more than once, I mean, sadly, <laughs> more than once, but I... And what I'm going to share with you, I found peace in implementing these tools and just learning some fundamental truths over time. Uh, I think you are a wise lady. And more than anything, I'll bet that I'm just going to be confirming for you in my words what you already know. And so I, I do not judge your walk or journey, nor do I appreciate anyone uh, judging mine. You know, we're all out here doing the best we can. We hit our heads, you know, we learn, we grow, what have you. I want you to be gentle with yourself because you did what most of us are out here doing. You know, you took a shot. You, you took a shot, you know, things started out nice. And, you know, sometimes as time goes on, um, we just are not privy uh, to what is going on in the backdrop of someone's life or their mind. And oftentimes they don't have um, the guts or, or character to let us know. So let's start there. Um, I don't, you know, often in these messages, I'm, I'm really big on taking personal accountability and taking control of a situation emotionally for yourself. But momentarily, I do want to put a spotlight on individuals who will know something has shifted in a relationship and whether that is eight months or 18 years. And 
someone you're dealing with ha has the right <laughs> to know or else you're kind of just left dangling what is going on. And you've said that you've asked for clarification and that's been glossed over. And I don't want you to ignore that. You know, some people will kind of leave you dangling um, to figure things out for yourself because they're poor communicators. Something has changed. They just they don't know how to communicate or intimidate it. Don't like c direct communication. Others do it because they lack character and just, you know, sucks to be you. Figure it out. That That's on you. And still others do it because they just, quite frankly, for lack of a better term, don't give a damn. Um, in any case... Um, this is when your self-care, self-preservation, self-respect should, should kick in. I get it. I've done exactly in the past what you've done, kind of asked for clarification on what, what's going on. Can, can we talk about it? Once you re, you're, you're not even getting that, um, at that point, what kicks in is our, you know, again, self-care, self-preservation, all of that. And it is your responsibility um, to really kind of look objectively and just say, you know, I, I can't pinpoint exactly what is going on here in the backdrop. But the one thing I can pinpoint is there's been a shift. Um, I'm not feeling uh, the respect level of engagement or interest. And at that point, you need to get yourself to what I call emotional safety you need to you know kind of get out of the ocean of flailing about and we want to metaphorically speaking get on safe dry safe dry ground um, because what I've seen over and over again generally um, the person who'll have you dangling like this they they're they're aware of your discomfort um, it's it's just that they're not going to take the steps <laughs> to support you. And sometimes they just want to keep you dangling or on the line, you know, whether that's for their own purposes, sexual gratification sometimes, or it's a, uh, power games that people play. I will be making some videos in the future about just understanding the games people play and, and why they play them and getting yourself off the court. Because they can't play the game with you unless you're on the court participating. So again, your job is just, you know, you may not be able to pinpoint it exactly. But the only thing you really need to pinpoint is it doesn't feel safe. Uh, you don't feel respected and you need to get to safe ground. I'm going to give you some really, um, this is, I think, really powerful advice. And I will share a bit of my story with you. I was dealing with this individual, um, had dated for a while and, you know, super hopeful. I've shared parts of this story with you all before. And, you know, the, the, the circumstances just changed, uh, for a bit there, I was reeling. I didn't know what was going on. I kind of just felt high and dry, but more than anything, you use the word fatigued, exhausted. I was just extremely exhausted and what I did for the first time, and instead of turning away from that exhaustion, talking myself out of it, I literally used this feeling, this emotion. We resist feelings and emotions. And I invite you, don't do that. Fatigue is a fabulous tool that you can leverage for moving past um, what may have deteriorated into a toxic situation. For me, I just allowed myself to feel the full weight of that emotion. I just can't take another step forward. Like I'm, I'm psychologically, I feel like I'm being toyed with. I'm tired. And sure enough, <laughs> that, you know, the phone that had stopped ringing, it eventually rang again. And I just, you know, I looked at it. I'm like, I, you know, I'm just tired. You know, I was too tired to reach out again. I was too tired to wonder about it again. And I just allowed the fatigue to be used. I mean, when you think of fatigue, I think of sitting on the edge of a riverbank and just refreshing my soul. I took all that time to just refresh, you know, and the only thing worse, and this is for you, Danielle, the only thing worse than losing power and momentum to someone who's disregarding your feelings for eight months it's losing power and momentum for eight months in a day. And you just have to say, you know what? I acknowledge it. I'm hurting here, but I'm, I'm literally, I'm tired and I'm moving into this fatigue and letting the restoration begin. So 
use the feelings, use the emotion. Disgust is another one. I love that emotion because disgust will disgust you right into a new direction. You know what I mean? Sadness. Sadness will dip you so low. Like, I don't know where I'm going, but I, I can't move in this direction anymore. So we can use these tough emotions to, to leverage change. Um, next thing I want to share with you, Danielle, look for the fruit. When you don't know what is going on, for me, I always look to the fruit that the relationship or connection is bearing. See, you will know the tree by the fruit it bears. Good, good trees, good fruit, juicy fruit, happy fruit, sun-kissed fruit. If it's uh, the, the tree is not rooted, it's rotted fruit, bad fruit, hollow fruit is going to be produced. You don't need that in your life. I mean, what what comes from the source, that's how you know what the situation is rooted in. So I know um, it can be a challenge to look at it from that perspective. But if you're constant, like you can't get a settled feeling, you know, sometimes you're, you know, uh, wonderful smiles on your face. But most of the time you're just dipped low. You're wondering what's going on. That's not good fruit. I don't know about you, but my happiest um, friendships, relationships, I'm consistently happy. I'm consistently um, lifted. There may be a dip, but I'm talking about just that chronic feeling. I just don't, this isn't good. So that's a reflection. You've looked at the fruit. It's not producing joy, happiness, and elevation in your life. That gives you a clue. I need to go in a different direction. And then lastly, I encourage you to Select a visual anchor for yourself. I'm really um, big on visual anchors. Um, one of my power anchors, um, I like to see myself as just this um, strong, amazing submarine powering through the ocean. I have that visual all the time because it reminds me whatever is going on, I'm that submarine. I'm, I don't care. I'm powering through. I can be hurt. W one engine may be down. Damn that. We're going to take it into the shop, get a repair. I'm getting right out there because I'm, I'm not here to suffer. I may hit my head, whatever the case may be, but then we just adjust course. That's what we're all doing out here. We adjust course. But if you don't really take a good look at what's going on, you're going to end up sitting there dangling, reinforcing behavior. And you don't need that. You know, this person reaches out, you know, you're still hanging out. That's just reinforcing the behavior. What you need to do is get yourself to safety. And once you get to safe, dry ground, you can think clearly. You can think more critically. Um, find a visual anchor that works for you and resist nothing. You know, there will be days, I can just speak for myself, um, again, having gone through similar you know, there were days I felt, you know, in that transition where you're still on maybe like halfway, the ocean is right there, you're a little bit wet and you're half on dry ground and you're just getting your momentum and equilibrium back. You know, there were days that were very good where I felt really strong, centered, and there were days, my God, you know, even with this, this bozo, what I've been put through, I still miss this person. Um, and I just had to be honest about that and say, you know what, multiple things can be true at once. You can miss the good, the elevated aspects of the connection. You know, things don't start out torn to hell. You know, there's, there's a progression here. You can, you can miss that and still know in your heart, mind, and soul, it's not a healthy dynamic for me. I own my feelings. I need to take care of myself and I don't want to continue X, Y, Z. I don't want to continue to suffer. I don't want to continue this discomfort. So I think when you set yourself up and you either lie to yourself or, you know, or, or, or fight realities, I'm just a firm believer, acknowledge it, kind of just, just break through the resistance because resist, resistance is going to make you do things and create a tension and pressure that produces more suffering rather to say, yes, you know, I'm still, I'm not quite there yet. I'm making myself through, but I want to make better um, decisions. So I think you see where I'm going with that. Just be straight up honest with yourself. And then you can move into a lot of really 
beautiful statements, adult self-soothing statements. I already gave you one, Danielle. You could say to yourself, the only thing worse than dealing with this for eight months is dealing with it for eight months in a day. You know, another adult self-soothing statement, this too shall pass. Another statement, my job right now is to move forward and just not do anything to make this harder on myself. So, you know, I've, I've sat, I've done my reflection. This is how I plan to move through. I know the feelings will flow through me. I'm not afraid of feeling them, um, but I do have tools and methods uh, to keep myself calm. And then lastly, um, I just, it's just on my heart to share this. You know that I weave a lot of spiritual messages into um, what I share with all of you. I just um, feel in my heart that God is not the author of confusion and where you just can't get that settled feeling. Again, we know that that is not good fruit for us. Um, We don't have to struggle uh, to get to that high ground. We can always call in the angels, the power of prayer, is phenomenal. And I know it seems counterintuitive. Well, Sheila, yes, you know, I'm going to pray for myself, but I'm asking you also to um, say a prayer, um, um, blood covering and and a, a blessing for the individual who is, you know, their behavior, whatever lack of communication, because that is just some, again, we never we never know what people are going through. If it if they're just immature is as heck. We they that needs a prayer. Um, if they've gotten themselves, you know, if they just recklessly, carelessly kind of left you dangling, maybe they met someone else. That's someone who just lacks fundamental character. That's an individual who needs a prayer too. And just I find that when you put just consistent prayer over you know, the individual who's more or less triggered the angst. I know it's not always easy, but it does speed healing. It's, it speeds healing. I've done this many times over the years for people who've really just thrown me for a loop to the loop. And I just say, you know, Father, I don't know what kind of how they're oper like what feel they're operating on that allows this, that this is okay. But, you know, I, I leave it to you and I just pray that uh, they find you and vice versa. And I, I just need to go on into my healing. So you're just putting just a lot of, of, of decency and light out in the world. And then I can tell you, you know, a lot of people say they struggle, they're angry, they want revenge. I'm going to be, you know, keep it a thousand with all of you. You know what the best revenge is? And I know you got to really lean into this for a minute. The best revenge is just going on and living well. I think when we, you know, retaliation and, you know, being angry and flailing about that, that's just a statement that the individual is still on your mind. You know, you need to go out in the sunshine and have fun and laugh and enjoy yourself. And, you know, if moments of tears come, let them come. You don't need to resist that. But you dry your tears, you know, we can take care of that kind of thing in private. And you get out here and you get in life. And to me, that is the most powerful and best revenge because that makes a statement, you know, you, you're you essentially a blip on a screen. I went on and I just, I love the mentality of just, I'm going to forge ahead. It doesn't matter. Come what might. So Danielle, I do honor you as a, as a, uh, as you said, the successful, um, smart woman you are, you're all of those things. I don't want you one bit uh, to be ashamed. Uh, We all need resources and support. That's what I'm here for. And lady, I just encourage you, you know, you deserve someone who is just thinks that you are the cat's meow in the best thing since sliced bread. And if this person can't recognize it, you damn better bet best well bet someone out here um, will and you don't you just don't belong in in this place I get it like I said I've, I've been there more than once and I just want you to do everything you can eat well work out power forward get some things on your calendar and you know time and you being focused and loving yourself it will speed the healing and um, drop me a line and let me know how you're doing. Thanks, everyone. Please show uh, Danielle some love. Have you dealt with this? 
let me know in the comments. I will respond to you. I, I just love commentary that, that involves getting over and getting through. So thanks so much. I'll be back soon.